example, we were talking about ecosystems on a, a district or kind of hyper local level. And now with Go Virginia, we're going to take that conversation to more of a regional level. Go Virginia is a regionally driven economic development initiative that encourages collaboration between local governments, higher education, private industry and workforce by incentivizing projects that will create higher paying jobs in the traded sectors. And if you're not sure what region you're in, here is a map to help you um, figure that out. I would also really encourage you to visit uh, Go Virginia's website, which we will put in the chat box as well, so that you can take a closer look at these regions, see what their priorities are on a regional level. And why is that important? Um, because Go Virginia work is really broken down by those regional councils. So the board is responsible for awarding funds to projects recommended for consideration by those regional councils. And the regional councils are private industry led and have representation from education, workforce, local government, economic development, et cetera. So really thinking about all of the pieces that make up that ecosystem at the regional level. DHCD oversees the administrative and financial aspects of the board, while support organizations in each region provide similar services for the regional council. So you can see kind of that, that flow of how this program works. And each region is charged with creating a growth and diversification plan to identify target industries, industry clusters, and regional strategies. So that's really a recognition that what Northern Virginia needs may not be the same as what Tidewater needs, may not be the same as what Southwest Virginia needs. So um, fortunately, that kind of flexibility is built into this program. Different project types, there are per capita allocations for each region, and those can be in enhanced capacity building projects or implementation projects. So ideally, we are looking at the ECBs as being that planning component that then leads into an implementation project. There's a statewide competitive implementation pool as well, and an economic resilience and recovery pool um, that funds strategic initiatives in response to the economic crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, that is a fund that does have an expiration date, as you see there. So if you want to know uh, where your region is, with those funds, get in touch with our Go Virginia staff, ask the question here in the chat box, and uh, folks will work with you on that. So again, taking a look at um, the fiscal year 2022 funds, which was an allocation of $30 million. So the regional capacity building is at $2.25 million per capita projects at 17.5 million, and then statewide competitive projects at uh, approximately 10 million. And the Go Virginia focus areas have four investment priorities. Uh, we've mentioned workforce development, net startup ecosystem, site development, and then cluster scale up. So again, if we're thinking about Main Street and community business launch as those um, place making storefront based programs, then Go Virginia kind of takes that and blows it up a little bit. Uh, again, looking at the regional level versus the hyper local, looking at different kinds of uh, jobs and a different kind of ecosystem, a different kind of workforce. But we know that these all come together to create the, the best, most um, impactful and uh, desirable regions possible throughout Virginia. So our Go Virginia example is going to be Virginia State University. And I thank uh, Dr. Patrice Perry Rivers for joining us this morning. I just occurred to me, it is still morning, I hope. And uh, Dr. Perry Rivers serves as the director of Virginia State University Center for Entrepreneurship. She is also an associate professor of strategic management at Virginia State University and the primary investigator and director for the Minority Small Business Launch Center, which is powered by VSU Center for Entrepreneurship and go is a Go Virginia funded program. And she is here to tell us um, more about what's happening 
down at VSU and the Center for Entrepreneurship. Uh, Dr. Perry Rivers, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is all over to you. You just let me know when you want me to change slides. Sure, you can actually go to the next one. So, so what we've done at Virginia State University is we applied for a Go Virginia grant. It was a per capita grant that focused on startup, startup ecosystem uh, development. And uh, what we did is we wanted to create something that aligned well with what we were doing at our university and our college, and then also aligned really well with the uh, strategy for Region 4, which is the Richmond MSA, where we're posited. And so we came up with something called the Minority Small Business Launch Center, which really allowed us to reach uh, early stage firms and to assist them with training and lots of other resources that we have put together for them uh, with our various partners. So technically, the VSU Center for Entrepreneurship in our College of Business uh, are, is the grantee. Uh, and then we got a $453,000 grant from Go Virginia Region 4 Council. And our grant required a 50% match. And so we also received $238,500 in in-cash and in-kind support from partners across the region uh, in order for us to meet our match uh, when we apply for the grant. You can go to the next slide. And so our project was is really an, a, an entrepreneurship pre-accelerator. So we want to increase the entrepreneurship participation rate. That's the uh, technical term uh, for just the entrepreneurship rate amongst minorities in the Richmond MSA. And so what we want to do is to offer business development training and an array of other services uh, like uh, opportunities to network with other businesses, like uh, specific assistance on <clears throat> writing a business plan, et cetera, like student assistance in implementing various uh, tasks associated with operating a new business in order for them to be able to launch and to scale. Minority businesses throughout the country and small uh, businesses tend to stay small and we want to be able to help them to be able to grow. We have been supported by an array of regional partners, including uh, the minority chambers and the Richmond MSA and the minority, uh, the Metropolitan Business League, the African American Chamber of Commerce is there, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and numerous other entrepreneurship support organizations like Lighthouse Labs and Startup Virginia, and also by municipalities, banks, the SBA, the SBSD, and then other higher ed institutions like George Mason, uh, which implements, and VCU. Uh, which have uh, their own pots of funding that come from various state and federal sources. So we can go to the next slide. And so again, I've already talked with you about why we thought it was necessary for us to launch this or apply for this grant. But we really wanted to increase the uh, entrepreneurship rate amongst minority groups because it's such a large percentage in the Richmond MSA that if we don't focus on growing businesses amongst this group, then it has a, an, an adverse economic development effect for the entire region. And so what we're doing through our programming is, is seeking to contribute to the whole economic growth of the region. And, and this information that you see here just shows the vastly different entrepreneurship participation rates that exist between uh, non-minority groups and minority groups in the Richmond MSA. It's a similar pattern across the country. You can go to the next slide. But we thought that, hey, we're uniquely positioned as Virginia State University to help build a more inclusive entrepreneurship ecosystem in Region 4. And we actually would have the capacity to offer a comprehensive training and networking program for minorities and others who seek us for assistance with a wide scope. Uh, and so I think the reason I want to include this slide here is not even so much as to tout Virginia State University, but for you to think about how your organization has the specific strengths uh, that will allow it to most effectively implement a program like this one. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So we had some clearly articulated uh, overall project goals, and that's to help these lower resource entrepreneurs create scalable businesses that ultimately produce higher paying jobs in region four. And we wanted to align this with the target sectors and industries that have been identified by our region as ones on which they want to focus. 
Uh, then what, so what we did is we're looking primarily at health, life sciences, communications, energy, financial services, transportation, the digital economy, et cetera. And that really allows a lot of e-commerce based businesses to participate in our programming, which is great. You can go to the next slide. So some of the very technical aspects of our program, including include student and faculty led business support and technical assistance. So our students help people uh, develop a, a spreadsheet for their products, uh, write a business plan following a template that we provided for them. Uh, we're able to provide them with entrepreneurship launch and growth certification training, some that we've developed as Virginia State University, and then also some that has been developed for us by our partners, including Startup Virginia, which has provided a customized training system for people who participate through our program, access to co-working space, both spaces at VSU and through our partners, we also have investor venture capital and bank funding training, regional entrepreneurship networking events, access to maker space, some of these things that we're building, other things that we already had, and other things that our uh, partners had, but was not necessarily something that many of our target customers were accessing. So this just gives you an idea of the array of services that we attempted to, uh, that we are attempting to offer through our, our project. You can go to the next slide. And then what we have is we have some program metrics. And so Go Virginia is an economic development uh, prioritization uh, grant. And so you really need to have some metrics that can uh, demonstrate that you are ultimately going to be able to contribute to real businesses who will actually be able to provide real income for both the, 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 the founders and for potentially some other employees in the future. So what we have here is we've got certifications that uh, we uh, have awarded so far just since our grant has been funded. We just got funding in July of 2021. We've been able to award 100 certifications. We've had 300 entrepreneurs who've been trained at our various events that we've had. We've had over 2,496 training contact hours. We've got 40 businesses that we intend to have founded, uh, five patent applications that we ultimately like uh, to be pursued. Uh, 10 new products released uh, or that we'd like to see released and 90% of participants who, be who believe that we've helped their business. Let me clarify uh, that this is not what we have accomplished so far. This is what we intend to accomplish. I apologize. On a following slide, then you'll be able to see what we've done so far. And then 40 businesses expanded. You can go to the next slide. And this is actually what we've accomplished so far. As I was talking, I was thinking, I don't think we've done that much so far. <laughs> no. So what we've accomplished so far is that we've got 60 certifications. We have 389 entrepreneurs trained. We're tracking ahead of our ultimate goal. And that is in large part, again, because we thought that we'd be uniquely positioned for large reach. So we've been able to be really effective with that metric. We've had 2,775 training contact hours. 14 businesses that have been founded, no patent applications yet, though we did have a, an intellectual property protection webinar last semester. Uh, we don't have any product releases that we have been informed about as of yet. Uh, our survey has not yet gone out to all of our participants from last semester uh, that asked them how effective our training has been, but we anticipate a positive response. And we have three businesses that have formally indicated that they have been expanded. You can go to the next slide. And so this just gives you an idea of the supporters that we have for the project. And again, I'm not showing this so again to tout our program as much as I am for you to see what you need to do in order for you to have this broad coalition that will enable you to effectively implement your program, which whatever type of Go Virginia program that you come up with. So we've gotten support from the SBSD. They've already had a training session at VSU, Chesterfield, Henrico, uh, Petersburg and several of the municipalities from our region have been supporters. Startup Virginia is a very active supporter, as has been Lighthouse Labs and the Metropolitan Business League. And so uh, we've been very fortunate to have this really broad coalition of supporters. You can go to the next slide. So, so I wanted to also just say one other thing to you. I, I wanted to just talk about some takeaways for success in garnering a Go Virginia grant. And I think that really helped, it, it's really helped me to think through 
uh, what would be I ideal for people who would come after me uh, for them to think about when they're putting together an application. So I think that what you want to do is to make sure you identify a clear target group for your efforts and a clear project that aligns with your region's articulated strategy. I mean, th there is a each one of the regions has to come up with a written strategy and they've identified the industries that they like to focus on and they've identified even some of the tactics that they would like to see uh, to occur for them ultimately increasing economic development in the region. So you want to make sure that you're able to align with that. You also want to put together a well-written and a well-thought-out proposal, which has as many uh, stakeholders, uh, contributions as possible so that you can make sure that you don't miss uh, what could be some of the selling points for your grant. You want to make sure that you identify some matching funders ahead of time for your project uh, so that you'll be able to have match funding because we have pursued a grant that required a 50% match. I think that most often, though, you have to have a 1-1 one -one match. Uh, and so that you're going to want to make sure that you seek partners who can help you with this uh, through a combination of in-kind and cash support. I've already talked about this wide ranging coalition of partners that you're going to want to establish. Uh, but then when you are actually implementing your project, then you're going to want to co-develop programs with partners to reach your target. And then you're going to want to leverage your partner's existing programs along with yours in order for you to be able to reach your goals and most effectively serve the target that you've identified. You want to identify some clear metrics for your project. That's part of what you have to do when you're putting together the grant. But you want to make sure that those are metrics when you're putting them together that you can measure effectively and that you'll be able to actually reach. And then what you want to do, and this is something that we're still working on, is developing a clear post-grant receipt reporting process, not just for Go Virginia. They actually require that, but also for yourself, for your organization, and for your target customer so that they're aware of what progress that you've made. And so one of the things that we've done uh, to keep people abreast of everything that we're doing and the resources that they have access to for the entire process is we have a, a great website that you uh, see our homepage for uh, on this last slide. So thank you for allowing me to speak and I hope some of this information is useful to the participants here in this meeting. Oh, absolutely. I I am not able to see the chat box or to see people's faces, but I know that I, I learned a lot. Um, Dr. Perry Rivers, thank you so much for being a part of the program today. That was really great information. I I hope that everyone is is, is learning as much as I am and, and being inspired by what you're learning.